Never believe these people again. How many times do you have to be lied to, and tricked and manipulated before you stop believing these people, or at least continue to ask questions? There's a study of uh, tech companies, and they found that the companies that have made this big public declaration, this big Black Lives Matter pledge, those companies have 20% fewer black employees than the companies that, <laughs> that did it. Not surprising, right? Let's jump to COVID. I mean, that's the biggest one, obviously, right? How did the experts, the experts, come up with their death projections? They made them up. The Imperial College was one of the big ones that did this. Imperial College was run by Neil Ferguson, right? Neil Ferguson is the Fauci of England, right? Think the, Fau the Tony Fauci of England, who had to resign in disgrace pretty early on with the whole thing because he broke quarantine to go have sex with a married woman, right? There he is. Uh, People said, well, where did you come up with these projections? And I'm not even kidding. He said, it's so complicated, you can't understand. <laughs> then he later admitted that they don't even know what their model is because they've been adding to it for so long, they're, they're not even really sure what it is. They're just plugging in a bunch of numbers and then it just spits out and they don't even know what the machine is, the machine model is in the middle that results in, in, the, in the projections, right? But let's focus on Neil Ferguson for a second. He's been wrong many times before. 2001, Neil Ferguson, Imperial College. Does that name ring a bell? Imperial College, right? You've seen all the, the, the graphs and everything. That's all from Imperial College. In 2001, Neil Ferguson said 150,000 people are going to die from foot and mouth disease. 200 died. 2005, he said 150 million people would die from the bird flu. 282 people died. 2009, he said the swine flu would kill 65,000 people. It killed 457. Why would we ever listen to that guy ever again? How could someone be so wrong so many times for so long and still have any credibility at all? I guess when you don't pay any consequences for being wrong, you have no skin in the game, right? Elon Musk called him an utter tool who does absurdly fake science. Uh, there's a doctor here in San Diego. He's a, uh, he's a like, what, he's the head of a cancer research center. Uh, he said, I'm normally reluctant to say this about a scientist, but he dances on the edge of being a publicity-seeking charlatan. And still, he's one of the main guys who led us into absolute panic. But it's not just COVID. It's the same old story. I've been exploring this point a lot recently. I think I've mentioned it a few times here, too. We are addicted. Humans are addicted to fear, anxiety, and hatred. We're addicted to it. Fear, anxiety, and hatred. We need more and more and more and more of this to feel satisfied. And just like any addiction, you need to elevate it, right? You need, like, not only do you need it constantly, but you need more of it, right? And I, I, whenever I was thinking of this, I was like, well, I don't know, can you really be addicted to a bad thing? And I was like, yeah, of course, you idiot. Like, everyone, no one's addicted to broccoli, right? People are addicted to ice cream, people are addicted to brownies, right? People are addicted to food that's not good for you. Same thing with fear, anxiety, and hatred. We're just addicted to it. So now that COVID's gone, and we don't have that fear, and we don't have that t thing to put our fear, anxiety, and hatred onto, what are we gonna put it on? Gotta put it on something. And there's a bunch of things, right? Obviously race, right? We're gonna put it back on that whole thing still. But I think climate change, it's the same playbook. Global warming, it's the same playbook. Global warming is the fakest science of them all. Talk about modeling. COVID and, and global warming, it's the same script. It's the exact same script. We were on global warming for a long time, and then we took that script, applied it to COVID, and now that COVID's over, we're going to take that same script and put it back on climate change. This is a CBS News report from the other day. Uh, the, the, it's the CBS News climate specialist. He was asked, how dire is this expected to get? And he goes on this whole thing about 1.5 degrees Celsius. One point, he went on for a minute about 1.5 degrees Celsius. A terrible thing. Things are going to get worse and worse and worse. But check out this follow-up question about where that 1.5 degrees came from. 
The intensity of these extreme weather events will pick up. We'll see compounded events, heat waves on top of sea level rise, on top of large hurricanes and impactful hurricanes. And so things will just get worse and worse if we breach that. And the bottom line is by 2030, 2035, unless we really rein in our emissions very quickly, we are likely to get to 1.5 degrees and continue to increase our warming close to 2 degrees. And again, we have to do something very quickly about it or we're inevitably heading in that direction. You say that, Jeff, this is this is a symbolic marker. Why? Yeah, because, I mean, humans chose it, right? We chose 1.5. We chose 2 degrees. So, again, it's not a tipping point. It's not like we're going to fall off a cliff. Mm -hmm. It's just that things will get progressively worse and worse at a faster clip as we head towards that. We'll see bigger hurricanes. We'll see worse floods. We'll see worse wildfires. And we're probably setting ourselves up for a pretty bad wildfire season in the West this year. All right. Jeff Baradelli, thanks so much. So, so they just made it up, 1.5 degrees Celsius. How did you choose that number? We just, we just chose it. Or what's so special about that number? Humans chose it. Are you kidding me? And we've been saying this for, for years. Like, I, like if, if COVID didn't blow the top off of this, nothing will. <laughs> right? you'll, like you'll never be convinced that, that these people are motivated by just human nature. It's fear, panic, power, money, using whatever uh, you know, thing people are panicking over to for, for a political end. And the same tactics are used to silence you. Right? you you're the denier. Same thing, right? Climate change and COVID are the exact same thing <laughs> when it comes to looking at human nature and the people who are pushing it and how they treat those who have genuine questions. Questions like, so where did that 1.5 degree thing come from? Oh, we just made it up. And I'm not going to go to the whole climate change thing, because, right? But like 1.5 degrees, what does that even mean, 1.5 degrees? 1.5 degrees where? 1.5 degrees where? Over the whole planet? The whole planet? I live in San Diego. It's going to be 80 degrees today here. In Siberia, it's going to be negative 10. So what's the temperature? What's the average, the average temperature, and over what time period? Over an entire year? Average temperature of the whole planet over a whole year? Compared to what other time period? What do you, right? I'm asking these basic questions, and what do you get called a denier? You ask basic questions about COVID, and what are you called? You want to kill grandma? Same thing. Never forget the public health experts who demanded that you must stay home. You must never leave your house. You got to cancel weddings. Don't go to church. Miss funerals. Potentially lose your job. Kids miss over a year of school. People miss routine doctor appointments, which will lead to missing cancer uh, diagnoses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? You can't do anything. You can't leave anywhere. Like, don't, you can't visit your family. No matter what you do, you're going to kill grandma, the whole thing. And then, as soon as the Black Lives Matter protests started, those same people came out publicly and said, addressing systemic racism is more important than stopping the spread against the spread of COVID. It's a public, racism is a public health emergency that's more important. Get out there and protest even though no one else is allowed to go anywhere. Never forget that. You have every right to be skeptical of the experts. It's even understandable to be very cynical. But let's channel that to boldly asking questions and not stopping until we get to the true story, no matter how much of a bigot or a denier you are called. Wow, that was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.